everybody, Meg Ruler 31 back for FSI DFS. I will be breaking down the Xfinity race at Bristol tonight. Last night's truck race was exciting, but very frustrating. I think my night was over in cash in like the first five minutes. I had a lot of wear. Um, and I thought that, you know, he would, or sorry, mayor. <laughs> and um, he, he wrecked in the ARCA race. I thought, you know what, that, that was just an outlier. And then he, he wrecked early. Um, he, he did go a little bit further until he wrecked again. Um, and then like Tanner Gray, he, he wrecked and I didn't have much Sheldon Creed because like the statistics, he just, it wasn't a good track for him. I thought John Hunter Nemechek would get around him and just not look back. And the thing is that nobody could pass Creed until the end. Uh, Chandler Smith finally figured it out with the help finally with John Hunter Nemechek. And it was an exciting good race. And, um, you know, you feel bad for, um, Austin Hill, who wrecked in, is out of the playoffs, and um, Gillian, who just didn't make it by points, by like two points. But you know what? Somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. And this is the final race for Xfinity. So do a little free Friday thing here. Um, the chart that we give our subs is um, right up here in front of you. So free for you to look at and to use. It's a recommendation of um, plays and my projection of ownership. I don't like to like dig into the percentages. So I try to figure out who I think the top three chalkiest guys are going to be and then who's going to be highly owned, low owned and medium ownership and just kind of give it a tag like that. I'm not one to figure out if somebody's going to be like 50% owned or 30% owned. I'd rather just give you a from the four different ranges there. And then our plays primes are the ones that I think are going to be my cash core then cash the GPP and then the fades. You'll see a gray, it's kind of hidden here. Um, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. The playoff picture for Xfinity, like I said, it's the last race before the playoff. So what you have here is the ones that are in dark green are pretty much safe and secure because they've won a race. And this is what their um, ranking would be if, if the playoffs start. The top 12 make the playoffs. The ones in light green are, I feel, are pretty much safe, even if they rack or something and finish 40th. I think they have enough of a cushion that they're not going to be affected. Now, nobody right now, um, 13th is Michael Annette. He missed a couple of races because he had that stress factor. So he's behind in points. He's 66 points out. There's no way that by points, even if um, the 12th place driver who is Riley Hurst right now finishes last and Annette finishes second, that he would be able to get enough points to make it into the race or into the playoffs. However, if he wins, he's in. So that's why I made some of these guys orange because 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th are all within enough points of each other that any, well, sorry, not 13th, but 10th, 11th, and 12th are all within enough points of each other that if an outlier person wins this race and gets in on their win, that one of those three could potentially fall below the cut line and not make the playoffs. So the ones that are still available for a win to get in, um, and people might be saying, like, well, what about Ty Gibbs? He won some. He's not officially declared as a full-time driver. They talked about this for Josh Berry, too, trying to get a waiver for them. But And there are guys that ran all the races, but they just still don't qualify if it's too complicated to get into. But looking at it, I believe that Brandon Brown, Ryan Sieg, Michael Annette, Josh Williams, Tommy Joe Martin, and I'm not positive, but I'm going to listen here. Brett Moffat, I believe, even though he missed last race with an illness, um, is still in contention to qualify for the playoffs. So the guys with the red W need a win to get in. Like I said, Moffat's the only one I'm not positive on, but the rest of them, I'm pretty sure, um, looking at the NASCAR statistics, that they had like points back from the 12th place, which would mean that if they won, that they would automatically qualify for the playoffs. So this race could be very interesting. So uh, let's look up at the top. Uh, Noah Grayson starting on the pole after uh, he's got a couple wins recently. After seeing what Sheldon Creed did, I don't know. I always put Noah Grayson as a GPP. He's way too aggressive. He, he's actually mellowed out a little bit and he's actually done really well recently so I think there's a lot of merit in it I think he's gonna be highly owned and definitely he'll be the first guy in my GPP line unlike Creed last night who I didn't play because I thought he would just fade back but I don't think 
he's going to get out there and dominate. He possibly could. So you got to have some exposure to him. If he, if he does the same thing Sheldon Creed does and lead like probably seven eighths of the race, because actually there's only the last couple of, there's like probably 98% of the race he, he led. Um, could that happen with Grace? And yes, but I think there's more talent in here. So I think there will be a better opportunity for people and there's more laps for people to get out ahead of him. Uh, it takes a lot of um, luck and skill and um, pit strategy to maintain the whole race with the lead here, even though it just seems to trouble the past. The other thing too is there was the Arca race before. There were some wrecks in the Arca race. They did lay down some rubber. So it did make the track a little bit uh, slicker and more unpredictable to start this race. This, um, I don't believe there's anything going on before this Xfinity race. Yes, you have like the rubber laid down from the trucks and, and everything for, and they did have like a little um, of the grip stuff down on the bottom to try to create a lower groove there because the upper groove seems to be, it's not like a wall racing track, but it definitely on all the restarts, the outside line had the advantage. Um, so hopefully, you know, we'll see some passing and some decent racing here and like it's, it's not as bad as some of the races. I think Martinville is like the smallest track where it's like almost you put like all these cars in a blender, but still it, it's pretty intense with um, bumping and, and rubbing and racing. So Grayson, I definitely like, but I'm not really excited with him and Cash. Algar, on the other hand, I mean, he statistically, he looked good last week and he kind of um, didn't have the setup. He didn't do well, but here again, he looks like a really strong, um, track history. He's been in good form. So I, I'm okay, like starting my lineups with him. I like the pricing. Um, and I think, you know, he's going to be what I build around in cash. Ty Gibbs, I think you can make a case for in cash also. Uh, he started back a little bit last and he got up and led a bunch of laps in the last race. It was, um, you know, another kind of a short track there. So definitely, but he's, he's not in the playoff picture here. So, and they're going to be trying to get stage points and stuff, because even though these guys are locked into the playoffs, you want to accumulate as much as you can to get a cushion, because then that's going to help you if we have a bad race, have a little bit of a cushion to um, continue to advance because I believe it's like, they have like three more races and then it's cut down to um, eight and then three more races. And then, it's cut off and then Phoenix is, is the end for them. And you have some wild card races like Talladega in there too, where anything could happen and, and major big crashes. So Gibbs, I think is a cash play. Um, I don't know if he's going to make value just at his price tag, unless he gets up there and leads a lot of laps and, and finishes well, he is a little bit aggressive. And this is a track where he could easily um, rub up against somebody, cut down a tire and end up back in the field. So I'm a slightly more apprehensive on him. Daniel Hemrick, like this poor guy just can never, ever win a race. Um, he struggled with the, like the setup the last couple of times. So I, I think he'll have a good car here. And, but again, I think he's in a safe position in the playoffs. I think, you know, they'll just play to, to advance and not do anything stupid. Justin Haley, I always a GPP, but he's actually pretty bad here. Um, I know if you look back at like, in the stats and stuff that he had some uh, pretty fast uh, laps um, in some of these other races, but there's been times where he's cut down tires and had to do unscheduled pit stops. So he had fresher tires and everybody off schedule. So of course he's going to turn faster laps, but that really doesn't mean anything. So with his aggressiveness, I have him as a GPP. The pricing's decent, but I'm a little skeptical on him. Harrison Burton, I think, is, is a good GPP play, too. Uh, Gibbs, he he's really wants to get a win this season, but I don't know. I, th I think he's going to – I don't know if he'll even make the final. Like, I think he'll make the first cut of the playoffs in the 12, but I, I think he might struggle to get into the final eight. I don't see him in the final four at all. Jeb Burton, um, Collie makes good cars or solid cars here, but I – I think, again, he's another one that's like safely in the playoffs. Um, would it surprise me if he finishes in the top 10? No, but I think he's going to be a guy that's just kind of there, um, has a solid day. So I'm okay with him in a GPP. The pricing is definitely really good, um, really cheap compared to some of these other guys. So if he you fits your build, no problem playing him. If he's last guy in cash, no problem playing him. 
uh, if you find yourself in the 79 range but i think you know if i had the choice there i'd go down 100 for my snyder with a more place differential um who's like almost just on the cut line like a ninth there for um he's only in the playoffs because of win but not really because he had a lot of points um so he's going to be one that's going to be trying to have a really good finish here to build up that cushion so uh riley herps gpp like briscoe's car has won here and done well but riley herps just isn't the same driver as briscoe was last year so the the car's good he's a little bit aggressive too which could hurt help or hurt here pricing's decent i think if i had a choice here i'd probably um go with jeb burton but he's another one that is fighting possibly for playoff life so if he which again i think might hurt him because i think again it's riley just go out there and and do your thing you are right on the cut line here so you make sure that um you finish this race because if say annette wins or one of these other guys wins then you know he's out unless um clements or jones has a worse race than him austin Sindrick is the next guy i really want in cash here i think that he really um is one that can get out and dominate this type of race there's a little bit of place differential just based on his poor performance um in the last race i think he can get up there um price tags a little bit expensive but i'd rather save if i'm paying like 11 five for gibbs i'd rather pay for cindric who i think can do the same thing can get out there and dominate the race just as gibbs can but with more experience with um really good car and um a chance to win i that's why i think he's going to be very highly owned and one of my uh, favorite plays here almond digger on the other hand could he get up there and lead and stuff i don't know I, in the range of outcomes i think he's gonna not play it safe but i think he's gonna go out there and race and collie makes good fast cars but it just doesn't seem like his style of track so at 10 to 5, I would rather play Allgaier for a little bit more. I'd rather take a shot in GPP at Grayson that he gets out there and leads early and people can't get past him. He's just, he's just the pricing on Al Almondigger. I know there's some plays differential, but I don't think I'm going to play much of him there. But in a GPP, I'm fine with it. Okay, now we come to two guys that have to win to get in. Brown and Sieg. Are they starting a little too far forward? Maybe. But the pricing is good at 74 and 75. I think that if you want the safer play in the GPP, you go with Brown. If you want the more swing for the fences upside play, you're going to look at Sieg because Sieg always experiments with this weird, um, like he'll pit before anybody, he'll zig when everybody else zags, he'll stay out there with, with bad tires and hoping to catch a caution. And you know what, he could end up winning this race, he could end up leading this race for a long period of time if he gambles and the brakes fall his way the problem is it seldom does but this could be the day who knows so i think both those guys are in play for those reasons i think uh brown would have more ownership than um a sieg would jeremy clements i think is going to be very highly owned just based on his pricing here and his um top 10 upside and the fact that he is also scrambling and just around the cut line um i think you can play him in cash safely and I think that he definitely can at least finish. He'll definitely should finish in the top 15. Uh, he's um, unless he has bad luck and somebody like I look at him like and I know he's got more experience, much more experience. But I kind of look at him like Haley Deegan yesterday where, where she started with her pricing. She ran a really good race until I think it was like Austin Hill or somebody um, took her out. So unless somebody takes Brandon Brown out, I think he's going to have a good safe race, finish in the top 15, um, definitely make value. It's, it's a good, or sorry, Jerry McClendon's, um, definitely make value at 6,700. Alex LeBay, I think he's a GPP here. Uh, he's another one that needs to win to get in. He's a little aggressive sometimes. I don't know if this is necessarily his track, but you know he's going to have to do something. So again, if they're swinging for the fences, if they miss the setup, um, pricing is great here for it. And if he fits your build, that's um, fine. I think you know I, I'd rather pay a little bit um, more for another punt because I, I do think he's a top twenty car. I don't know if he'll finish the top fifteen. 
but um, I'm definitely in playing GPP. Michael Ned is interested also, like I said, he is the guy right below the cut line. He has no way to get in here, but win. So I should probably put a 13. I should probably color this one as red instead of um, the orange. Let's see here, color palette. Okay, there we go, 13. Okay, so he's, but so I think, you know, with desperation, but I think it's a GPP because again, he, I like the pricing. I like the place differential. I like um, the potential here. He's in a really good car. Seems like he's healed. Everything's good to go. Um, really needs that win. So, but again, is he going to be pressing too much for it? So that's why I don't feel he's safe in cash, but I think he's a really, really good GPP play. He'll be in my GPP lineup. Uh, Brandon Jones, I think, you know, we, we talk about Brandon Jones being volatile and somebody that you really don't want to play, but I think he will be highly owned here. A little bit expensive, but I think the place differential is there. He's definitely a top 10 car definitely potentially a top five car he's another one that potentially is flirting with disaster if he has a bad race so again will that make him a little bit more conservative possibly but i think a conservative guy aggressive guy that's playing conservative is probably a normal racer so i think you know with his equipment everything that he can definitely with the rate of attrition with some of these other cars um can get up there and i think playing it a little bit safer gets up in the top um 10 has a nice finish so i think he can pay off his price tag so i'm okay with him in cash just in this situation normal days he's like a gpp play he and grayson are usually the first two in my gpp lineup but here i think cash he's okay my snyder i think cash play i like the place differential here uh, i think he's a little bit safer than uh brown and sieg especially with his um his team his car the speed that the car has and um his ability josh williams the guy that tk and i ruined his career we were touting him so much in the beginning of the year and he just kept on crashing week after week he's another one who needs to win and get in that's intriguing the price is fair at 6100 i think that's um a decent price to pay for him he's a gpp because i think he's got a ton of potential to try to win this race but in doing so it could cause disaster Cal Weatherman is one of our favorite punts, starting way too far forward here. Even though he's the cheapest driver in the field, he's a fade unless you absolutely have a line of construction where you need to put him in there. Brett Moffitt is, um, again, like I said, I'm not positive. I think he can still qualify with a win here. He missed last week with an illness. He's back. He's okay. He was going to miss this race, but he seems willing to go, which makes me think that he's, he's racing here because he can still get into the playoffs. I like him as a cash play just because I think this car, I, we've seen him get up into the top 10 and stay up there. I think our motorsports, is a, it's a decent car. I think he'll do well, medium ownership, and I think he can definitely pay off his price tag at 8.5 there. Godovic, I um, think it started way too far forward in the Sam Hunt car. I think he's just going to fall down into the 30s, so he's a fade for me. Sam Mayer, I should put fade here. He looked bad in Arca. He looked bad in the truck race. He's looked bad at times here. I know he is one at this track last year in the truck series. Um, but I think that that was uh, an outlier. He just really hasn't had success in this Xfinity in, in the car. So maybe GPP flyer, maybe I'll throw him in one lineup just in case, but I think I'm out on him. I, I think he's probably going to be one of the first ones out of the race. Tommy Joe Martins, again, I think if he wins, he gets in. I don't see Tommy Joe Martins winning this race or ever winning a race unless it's like a situation where Michael McDowell in Daytona, where he has so many crashes or the Bristol dirt race that they had where like so many um, people crashed or that one that they did in like the other truck race where there's so much um knoxville i think it was where there's just so much like attrition like i think that's the only way and bristol is it potential that there could be like a big rack and take out a bunch of the the key guys and he get up in front yes i mean anything could happen i mean you know uh anybody could win this race but i'm not i think 23rd is is a fair place for him i wish he was like 5300 not 6300 uh he's starting close to where we like him so if uh, and i think he's gonna have high ownership at his price tag so i'm okay if you're gonna play him with like but again i don't think that he's one that's going to try to win this race i just think he's going to go out there and be tommy joe martins and have a solid finish and um 
you know, see what they can do at Bristol. The next three are fades for me. They're starting way too far forward. I like the pricing, but I just see them all ending up falling down into like the thirties. Uh, Parsons is actually in the five car here. He and Matt Mills switch. So that um, makes me like him a little bit more, but only a GPP. Ryan Vargas, the same thing. He is definitely um, a viable punt here. The JD Motorsports cars are decent. I'd rather take Jeffrey Earnhardt in his situation and what I've seen him do. I think he can definitely get into the top 20, maybe a, maybe a ceiling of top 15 if a bunch of these other cars crash. But I think Vargas and Earnhardt can get ahead of probably Parsons Mills, um, Little Star, Mayor, if he crashes out Godovic. So I definitely see these guys getting like five place differential points. So um, they should definitely be able to play off their tags. Jade Buford, I think, is falling to the bottom. Uh, Ty Dillon is he's gotten better this arc motorsports car it's the brett moffitt's team he drove brett moffitt's car last week did decent i think he does decent here he's in good equipment he i, I think you know and he's torn up some cars in xfinity but i think this is more of his, his style of a race uh nine thousand is a little pricey for him but i think with the place differential that this car can get up into the top 15 it's a good solid car it shouldn't break down i think he can stay out of trouble um i think some of these other guys might be pressing too much uh as long as he's away from them when they all rack each other i think you know he could have a really good day so i like him as cash Sage Kamara, he's an indie car driver and not even a really good one jordy anderson this has been like a solid program this year but he has no experience in this Bristol track. So I just, it just seems like it's a recipe for disaster. So I'm out on him. Spencer Boyd, he's in the 90 car. GPP, maybe. I just really, if he can finish where he starts, I think he's okay. Carson Ware, I don't even know if he's going to make it through the whole race. So 6,400 is too expensive for me. Landon Castle is expensive here, but he's in the four car, this JD car is solid same team as Vargas and Earnhardt and um, they're definitely a, could get up into the top 25 10 to place differential points 77 I think he's border I can see him in cash here um I'd probably look for other options but if I land on him and I don't have 100 more for like Myatt Snyder I think you know I definitely consider him uh Joe Graff I think is you can play in cash I don't think he's going to advance too much but at 53 I look at, you know, where he's starting compared to um, Star and Little and Mills and Weatherman, and I think he can actually finish ahead of them, or at least it's finished where he starts, so I'm okay with him and his price tag there in cash. BJ McLeod's a GPP, a little expensive. I'd rather pay up for Castle and his car than the car that McLeod drives, um, but, you know, I definitely like him better than Greg Alding down here. Uh, I think he's a fade. I think he might finish like dead last. Um, Chad Fincham, he's one of my prime drivers here because he is in the 61 Hattori race car, which is a solid car. It's, it's been fast at times. It has had some mechanical problems, but many cars and some of these smaller teams have at one time or another throughout the race this year. But I, I kind of like him here because this is, I believe it's his home track and he knows this track really well. So 51, starting as far back, good, okay driver. Um, you know, he's not a liability. He's not one that's going to start a park and he he knows the track, good situation, good price. Can, even if he crashes early, I think, you know, there'll be at least a couple guys out before him. So he's definitely going to finish where he starts, if not advance might be able to make it up into like the top 25 or so. So definitely sign me up. He is my third guy in my lineup. I'm going to start with Algaier, Sindrick, and then Fincham, and then figure out who the other three guys are from there. Golding, like I said, I'm out, and Bailey Curley is a GPP. So appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully TK and I can connect tonight for the um, Cup Series one so we can give you that video together. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed these uh, solo breakdowns. Um, here i know there's a lot going on with like high school football tonight maybe for you college football getting ready for the nfl sunday we still have um major league baseball going on so many things going on so um it seems like the some of the prize pools have been cut in these races but hopefully if you know you're into racing and a diehard fan this video helped you you can put some money on this enjoy the race make a little bit of a profit and um 
We appreciate you watching. So any questions from the comments below, reach out to me at MegaRuler31 on Twitter. Hopefully just having this chart in front of you helped a little bit too, helped understand like how the playoffs and the situations are different drivers. So, you know, please share what we're doing with other people, like, you know, have them come watch this video or even for a few minutes just to study the chart, just to kind of see who to play tonight because we want um, you guys all to be successful and let us know how you made out. You know, if you do really well, just uh, give me a tweet at MegaRuler31 or come back and drop a comment and we appreciate your feedback. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.